to my YouTube channel. My name is Folaki Agumbiadi, aka the customer seductress herself. And I'm super, super excited to be back again this week. If this is your first time bumping into this channel, where have you been? Oh my God, I've missed you. We would have loved to have you here, but thank God you're here now. Look below, there's a red button. It says subscribe. Click on it. Yes, you just subscribe. Beside it, there's a bell sign. Click on the bell sign. Now you'll get a notification every single time I upload a new video. If you are a frequent returner to this channel, my sweethearts, I celebrate you. I appreciate you. Imagine if I were making these videos and no one was watching. Thank you for always coming back. Don't forget to like, comment, type us a short note, and share this video with your family and friends. If you missed out on last week's video and the week before, because it's a rejoiner, there's part one and part two. You need to check it out. Self-love part one and self-love part two. It's important that you watch those two videos before you get round to watching this because it will help you understand and navigate the waters we will be discussing today. So right into today's video, if you live in the part of the world where I live in, um, we lost an amazing minister of music, Minister Osinatri, a few days back, and it has generated a lot of conversations around the issue of abuse. A lot of people are coming out, videos are coming out. I'm traumatized with some of the videos I'm seeing online of people who have gone through domestic violence. Now, those videos have a lot to do with the feminine gender. Having said that, I need to put a caveat. Even men are going through abuse. I'm a psychologist. I see all sorts. And I'm not going to say that it is only the feminine gender that goes through abuse. On the basis of that information, today's topic, we're talking about intimate partner violence. Everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. If you do not have a measure of self-love, you cannot navigate this particular topic. That is why I wanted you to check out those two videos before we jump into this. I put a link in the bio of this video so that you can also find those two videos and interact with them because you need them. It's going to help you a lot. Minister Osinachi, unfortunately, uh, God bless her soul. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very sober in today's video uh, and uh, I'm taking a minute to say that for everyone who has lost their lives to um, intimate partner violence that um, their families will find the fortitude to be able to move on from this and for me it's a learning curve across board for every one of us who gets to watch this there are certain facts that we need to know. There are certain things we need to imbibe. Yesterday, I was on a session where these topics were being discussed. And that person said what I have always said about the issue of abuse. Both the abuser and the abused are victims. Sometimes it's hard to see that. And if we do not begin to address the abusers themselves with compassion, what we will have is that they will stay in the closet and not get the help they need to change from being abusers to being people who are against abuse in every form. So, intimate partner violence. Let's look at a few facts. Number one, more than one in every woman and more than one in every male man Across board has experienced rape, physical violence, and stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. That means if you have three women, one of them must have experienced these things I just mentioned. And if you have four men, one of them would have experienced it as well. Number two, 
74% of all murder suicides, yeah, where a partner decides to take their own life and take the life of their partner, involves an intimate partner, either a spouse, an ex-spouse, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. If you are in Nigeria, you would also hear about the story of the woman who came in from outside of the country and her spouse poured gasoline or petrol on her and lit up her and her younger brother and she passed on. So these are the realities that we live in and we need to be able to embrace these facts. Number three, these are statistics that are out there. If you go and check it online, you will find it. One to five female secondary school or high school, for those of you that don't live in Nigeria, reportedly have been physically and sexually abused by a dating partner or more. I remember a few years back, many years back, when I was in camp, and this conversation came up in the room where I was. Of course, being someone from a psychological background, when I hear conversations like that, it triggers my interest. The social sciences in me comes up and I want to know the numbers. And we're having that conversation one beautiful day in a long room. You know the way NYSC camp long rooms were and we're having that conversation. And I think in that room we're about, uh, if I'm not exaggerating, 20. Yeah, with the bunks and all that. And out of the 20, roughly about 17 people had experienced some form of molestation, physical abuse or sexual abuse. Yeah, the numbers are that alarming. Women are not talking about it, but those are the realities. Thankfully, in the times we live in now, there's more awareness. There are red alerts to these things. Children are not being left unattended. Parents are more involved. Teachers are more involved. There is more awareness as to how much goes on with the feminine gender. Number four, interpersonal violence is the leading cause of female homicides and injury-related death during pregnancy for women. Yeah, it's a huge, huge, huge number of women who are losing their lives to um, injury-related deaths during pregnancy. Yeah, sadly so. Number five, women with disabilities have 40% greater risk of intimate partner violence, especially severe violence, than women without disability. So we're finding that more women with disability are getting to be exposed to intimate partner violence. They are already having to deal with certain challenges. And now they are 40% greater risk of intimate partner violence. Now, what are your risks of experiencing intimate partner violence? As a woman or as a man, what are your risks? What are the risk factors that make it more common? I've been having conversations across board in many women groups. And what we don't get is that there are risk factors to abuse. There are certain reasons why people are exposed to abuse. So what are your risk factors? Number one, if you're poor, you have more risk factors to abuse. That means if you're not economically empowered to walk away from your abuser, if that person is funding you, paying your bills, it's difficult. Hence, women need to become empowered. You need to earn money. You need to make money. You need to multiply money. And you need to manage money. MMM. Even if you are at home with your partner, multiply the money you are getting from that relationship. Manage it so that you can save. Women who are poor, or men who are poor are more exposed at risk factors for intimate partner violence. Number two, if you're less educated, if you do not have an enlightened mind, for me, education is not at all about going to school. It's being empowered in your mind to think. Some of the cases of 
death from intimate partner violence were needless deaths. If only you were empowered in your mind. I'm committed to empowering women. It's something I'm very passionate about. Because when you empower a woman, you're empowering a nation. Yes, you're saving a village. If you empower one woman, she's probably going to empower other women. A lot of the women who have lost their lives to domestic violence were advised to stay by ignorant women themselves. Save your marriage at the expense of your life. I'm not an advocate for divorce, but I do not support people losing their lives to intimate partner violence. You should walk out, run. Everybody has been saying this. Run if your life is at risk. And you need education to be able to be empowered in your mind to be able to make those decisions. Number three, if you are an adolescent, a teenager, or a young adult, you're also at a risk of experiencing intimate partner violence because you're a bit naive, you're very, very inquisitive, you are, you are prone to risky behaviors and putting yourself in situations that can get you there. Number four, you're female. Yeah, sadly, I'm a preacher of equity for women and equality for women. Because truly, we're a bit disadvantaged, a lot disadvantaged, to be honest. If you're female, you're at risk of intimate partner violence. Number five, you are living in poverty. Yeah, you're trying to make ends meet. You're on the streets. You do not, that is where the, there is a need for government to support women who are disadvantaged. Because they are easy praise to certain things that are unnecessary. Then number six, you are dependent on drugs or alcohol. You are an addict. Yeah. The likelihood that you would have intimate partner violence is high when you are an addict either on drugs alcohol or you're addicted to anything sometimes people say they're addicted to love that is why they are in an abusive relationship but they never live on the flip side what increases your chance you watching me there what increases your chance of becoming an abusive partner yeah, because there are two parties in an abusive relationship, in intimate partner violence. And like I always like to say, the two of them are victims. What puts you at risk of being an abusive partner? Number one, low income. Yeah. You don't have money. Money is the root of a lot of abusive relationships. Money, 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 money. It's the root of a lot of abusive relationships. If you look at the triggers, it's tied to income. So if you're struggling with your income, don't take your frustration out on your partner. Look for a way to get yourself out of that mess. It puts you at risk. Number two, you have low academic achievement. You have not been able to empower your mind as well. Would make you have chances of becoming a, an abusive partner. Number three, you are young, immature, and you have not fully encompassed or had good role models that would highlight to you what it takes to be a man. Number four, aggressive behavior as a youth, recklessness as a youth, can put you a chance of becoming an abusive partner. And number, number five, Heavy alcohol, addiction as well. Number six, depression. Number seven, anger or hostility. There are many. So I'm just going to run through it. Number eight, prior history of physical abuse. You were born into an abusive home. You watched your parents have an abusive relationship. You are recovering from ACEs or you even haven't admitted that you are exhibiting ACEs. You are at risk of becoming an abusive partner. Number nine, few friends. And you are isolated from people. You don't have a community. That's why you notice abusers like to isolate themselves and the person they're abusing. 
So be submitted to communities. Be part of communities if you don't want to be abusive. Number nine. No, number 10, unemployment, low income, like I said earlier. Um, number 11, emotional dependency and insecurity. You are not emotionally intelligent and you are very insecure. Uh, number 12, and this is so common, belief in strict gender roles, male dominance. You grew up in a culture where men are the boss of the women. I'm an African woman. I'm Nigerian. Yeah. And they always tell you, submit. I'm a proponent for submission. But like I always like to say, we're all submitting. The question is, who are we submitting to? What are you submitting to? Do you trust that that person will protect and serve? Every woman will submit once there is an assurance of love, protection, and service. So if you grow up with those traditional beliefs in strict gender roles, men are in charge, men are on top, men are the this, you would have this problem. Number 13, desire for power and control in relationship. And this is exhibited in narcissistic personality disorder. And the last one, you're a victim of child psychological abuse. These are why you are probably an abuser or you have predispositions to be an abuser. I'll stop there for today and I'll be back next week for the part two where we'll be talking about forms of psychological aggression, what you can do, how to get yourself out of it. But before we go, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with your family and friends. If you want any support in terms of your psychological well-being, you can also send me a chat. I will be there to support you. We have to stand against abuse of every form. And we need to help both the abuser and the abused. Till I see you next week. Somewhere close. My name is Folake Agumbi Adeke, the customer seductress. I love you. Bye and stay out of trouble. Okay?